Hi, so today we're going to be covering week two of computer mediated communication. I'm going to be covering um, disinhibition effects and anonymity. So we're sort of getting into the dark side of computer mediated communication. Um, although, and I hope this will be a theme that runs throughout, um, we'll see that some things that are considered to be the dark side maybe aren't as dark as they seem. Um, so again, just a theme to be looking out, not just with this week, but for future weeks. Uh, so let's just talk about um, a little bit this uh, New Yorker article that you read talking about some of the problems that popular science ran into. Um, actually, it's not just popular science. There, there's been a lot of talks in the past years about um, for sites that have online comment threads where anybody can post anything they want, dealing with different topics related to whatever contents posted articles, let's say on science, um, should people be allowed to post anonymously? Uh, Anonymous means basically without any links to their identity. So um, can you actually be concealed of like who you from who you are um, and post anything you want or should you have to actually um, reveal things like your name or take some sort of, I guess you could say, responsibility for who you are when you post in these sites. And the reason this is such a big deal um, is because of, you know, vocabulary word, disinhibition effects. When people are anonymous, uh, when people feel like they're sort of like, um, concealed under the guise of anonymity and people don't know who they are, um, they tend to be less inhibited about with all sorts of behaviors. The problem for these comment threads comes in because people tend to be uninhibitedly uncivil sometimes or rude to each other. Um, uh, another video that is um, assigned for you to look take a look at this week, which is wickedly entertaining, um, is a video about trolling. Um, a troll somebody who on the internet Basically, their whole objective is to go out and be rude to people or to push people's buttons. Um, and trolls, of course, are not people who are easily linked back to any true identity. The whole point is that they can sort of hide under um, some sort of anonymous identity, and that encourages them this sort of bad behavior. Um, and of course, popular science was trying to take away the anonymous comments because they thought that it would improve the civility of their site. Um, because uh, they wouldn't have people who were just uninhibitedly rude or uncivil, and it would hopefully um, make the conversations a lot more uh, professional, focused, those types of things. Um, <clears throat> The interesting thing is, though, is that anonymity is not always necessarily a bad thing. Um, in many ways, right, if somebody can post anonymously, they might feel more encouraged to be honest, or um, they might be more uh, feel more encouraged to say something that people wouldn't ordinarily want to say because of the fears of how people would judge them and things like that. And that can be a good thing. That's why I have an anonymous back question and answer um, posting place on our eCampus page, because if you can post anonymously, it might free you up and make you feel more comfortable for posting certain things. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be rude. Um, so uh, it's kind of a, a toss-up, and I hope that we'll talk about this a little bit later in the discussion board, but I'd like to know what you think, if, if it's actually better or worse that people are able to post anonymously on uh, more popular sites, right, like uh, the New York Times, for instance. Like, should they um, bar anonymous comments or not? Like, what's the best course of action? Um, also, you'll remember last week we talked about this concept of de-individuation. Um, so uh, this was mentioned again in the, the Griffin chapter, and you know, remember side was the abbreviation for de-individuation effects. Um, remember, that can also happen when people post anonymously. And this can also be a good thing or a bad thing, because on one hand, if you're not seeing yourself as so much as, uh, as an individual, you might have an easier time connecting with different types of groups. Um, and this could be very positive if you're posting in an online support forum or something like that, where um, you want to be seen as a member of other human beings with similar interests, and, and those are highlighted. Um, it helps people connect. On the other hand, if the group uh, is uh, engaging in bad behavior, it might not be such a good thing to sort of have that have that de-individuated identity. If you've ever heard the term of groupthink, things like that, you would rather think people think of themselves as individuals in order to combat different types of uh, social um, the social waves that happen when people just think of themselves more as a group. So um, again, uh, something I hope we'll engage with more on the discussion boards, but be thinking about whether or not you think that um, posting anonymously in any sort of online forum, maybe it varies from forum to forum, um, is a good thing or a bad thing, because that's a, sort of a hot topic right now. Um, the other big uh, uh, theme of your readings, of course, was also deception. And um, I'm trying to figure out how to start talking about this. I guess let's go ahead and um, 
run down what a catfish is. You know, catfishing um, it was mentioned in two of your pop press articles. You can read the definition for yourself. And to be honest, I don't quite understand the metaphor that started this to begin with. But it was um, based on, <clears throat> excuse me, a documentary that, in my own humble opinion, I think was fake. But you can read the blogs on that. Whatever. Um, I think it's sort of the irony of the filmmakers catfishing their audiences about catfishing. Anyway, another time we can t discuss it in the forum. Um, it's also become a popular MTV show where um, essentially a catfish um, is somebody who deceives somebody else online, pretends like they're somebody they're not, uh, makes somebody um, uh, believe that they are uh, interested in them in the relationship. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but at the end of the day they aren't who they appear to be. Um, and this is, in fact, one of the things I mentioned not liking about, um, in the reading list, not liking about one of the, the, the articles that you're assigned for is this has been described as an epidemic um, of, of, oh, people are getting catfish left and right. And you hear, of course, one of the, the other article I assigned, the Manti Teo scandal, numerous celebrities sort of having these experiences where they fall for some sort of deceit, um, some sort of hoax online. Um, and it does seem like it would be something very common, but the honest truth is we don't know how common it is. And, uh, as a communication studies researcher, I kind of resent the fact that people talk about it as if it's, um, extraordinarily common when we know very little about it. And we do have a tendency when we see things in the media a lot to overestimate how often they occur. Um, it, it sort of was saying that of course it does occur, but um, with that in mind, you know, I, I thought it would be kind of neat to pair these d discussions about catfishing and why it happens and how it happens and how common is it with a reading about um, online dating, um, which is a little bit dated, I'll admit that, 2006. But I think a lot of the same things hold. Um, when you read that, um, you could do a study report on this if you want, of course, um, the Ellison et al. article. Uh, where they interviewed a lot of people about their online dating behaviors, people who use online dating sites, which um, sometimes has a little bit of a stigma, I think, because of things like catfishing, because people assume that they're places for deception and what normal people would go, what normal person would go and need to find romance online. Why, they could just find it in person. Well, that's easier said than done when you have like a nine to five job and you're not in the um, comforts of a college environment where people get paired up with um, similar interests, like different types of uh, extracurricular activities where it's easy to find people like you. Um, I think online dating websites actually serve a really impor important purpose in this day and age of, of connecting people who ordinarily would never be able to find each other. Um, what I liked about this uh, interview, the interviews that um, the researchers did though, is that they really showed that like, yes, it is true that deception happens quite a bit, but maybe not for the reasons that you're expecting. Um, so one of the reasons they talked about was this foggy mirror phenomenon where people, um, they might lie or misrepresent themselves in their profile. Maybe I'm going to say that, um, well, I'm a non-smoker. I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm going to say that I'm, I'm, what was the example I used in your quiz? So I can remember. Maybe I'm going to say that I'm, um, oh, that I'm a, a athletic build. Okay. So like <laughs> I have an athletic build and you're looking at me and you're like, no, why did you lie about that? Well, maybe it's that I see myself through a foggy mirror, and so I don't see myself very clearly. So even though you see me as more of a husky build or a stout build, I like to think of myself as stout teapot, um, it, it's really not because I was out there to deliberately deceive you. The reason I said that is because that's how I see myself. It's, it, it has less to do with sort of this um, malicious intent to deceive somebody and more to do with the fact that I'm putting on there um, uh, on my profile, things that th reflect how I see my own self. Um, another thing that came out of their research was um, sometimes people do deliberately lie. So sometimes what will happen is people will say, and this is where the smoking thing comes in, um, oh yeah, I'm a non-smoker. Or, oh yeah, no, 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 I run five miles a day, okay, all these different things. Or um, I weigh, and I'll say a number, 10 pounds less than I actually do. Um, well, what they found there is that sometimes what will happen is people will say those things not because they're, again, out there to catfish or out there to deceive anybody, but it's because they actually think that by the time somebody meets them in person that they'll have actually gotten to this ideal self. So it's more about wishful thinking. It's about, okay, I'm going to put on my profile right now that I don't smoke and hopefully by the time I actually meet somebody, I'll quit. Or if I meet somebody, I'll quit. Um, again, not necessarily the best strategy, I'll admit, but not also this um, attempt to deceive. Um, 
And the other interesting thing that they bring up, um, I think is worth mentioning, is that especially in online dating sites and many sites, um, I would argue that the the incentive to deceive somebody else is very, very low um, because the whole point of some sites like this is to meet somebody in, in the future. Um, and because the internet um, is permanent and verifiable, people can go back and like fact check things. And if, because if you're going to see somebody in the future eventually, they're going to know if you're a husky build or not, right? Um, people actually have a lot of incentive to keep those things in check and make sure that they don't mis misrepresent themselves. Um, anyway, um, but uh, having said that, one of the things I want you to be able to do, sort of connecting our different units together, um, is when catfishing does occur though, okay, so, so we've already said we don't know how common it is, but when it does occur, how can we apply computer-mediated communication theory to sort of understand that? And that's what that Manti Teo article did um, a little bit. Um, I think this is a great way to understand the applications of the hyperpersonal perspective that we talked about in the last week. Um, because the question at the end of the day with catfishing always ends up being, who would fall in love with somebody that they've never seen before? Only crazy people would do that. Well, actually, Walther's theory would suggest that it's pretty natural. And for all the reasons we talked about last week, um, self-fulfilling prophe prophecy effects and um, selective self-presentation, right? These are all... Um, affordances that, that can come out of um, interacting with somebody online. Asynchronous communication versus synchronous, right? It gives you more time to think about how you present yourself. All of these things are things that can actually make people seem um, hyper attractive, hyper likable, hyper lovable. Um, and it's really not surprising. I think people get uh, a little bit of a bad rap, not to say I wouldn't be cautious myself about meeting strangers online, but um, I do think that we tend to be a little overly judgmental when it's actually very understandable how somebody could fall very deeply in love with somebody, very deeply in friend with somebody um, that they've actually never met in person before. Because in some ways, computer-mediated communication can actually be a better place for relationship development. Um, anyway, I think that covers it. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on the online forum.